Howdy y'all, it's Chris with Shell Fitness, favorite trainer with a belt buckle. Today we're going to talk about anatomy, reviewing the pectoralis major. But first, before we get into this, make sure to follow us on Instagram and YouTube. If you want to become a trainer, our next internship begins Los Angeles, August 12th, La Jolla, San Diego, September 10th. All you got to do is show up. So let's talk anatomy. International chest days on Monday. My favorite muscle, my favorite exercise is the bench press, so I love working out the pectoralis major. That's what we're going to go over today. We like to use the C in Adams 5th edition Illustrated Essentials of Musculoskeletal Anatomy. This is a great beginning anatomy book if you want to become a trainer or if you currently are a trainer and you want to take your anatomy to the next level. If you look at a lot of the textbooks, NSCA, NASM, ACSM, their anatomy isn't quite up to par. So I'm going to suggest starting with that, but then continuing your education and getting into more advanced like physical therapy, chiropractor, anatomy books, those are going to be far superior, but this is a great starting stone for you. So let's talk pectoralis major. When I work with our clients, the first thing I'll do is I'll go like this. Don't do it to your clients, you'll get in trouble. But you have five fingers, obviously, and you have three that go to the middle bone, which is your sternum. You have your pinky, it's pointing to the ribs, your costals. And then you have your thumb, which is pointing to this bone up here, which is the most broken bone in the body, the clavicle. So that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the, this text is going to say there's two regions of the pec. I break it up into three. The, the sternal region, which is the, the larger, costal region, and then the clavicular region. So that's why like, when you go to the gym and you lift weights, people stereotypically do bench, incline, and decline. Upper, middle, and lower. But we're not going to talk like that because that's bro language. We're going to talk scientific language. So we're going to start out with the O, which is the origin. The pectoralis major originates on the clavicular head, the medial half of the clavicle. So let's bring Skelly over here. Clavicle is between your scapula and your sternum. Floating bone, and that's why when we fall, or if you're skateboarding, whatever, it's very commonly broken. It's just like a twig, it's just going to snap. So we have proximal and distal. Distal is away, proximal is close to the midline. So we have the proximal region, which is going to be with the sternum and then the distal region, which is going to articulate with the scapula. Clavicular head, which is the upper part, is going to be originated on the medial half of the clavicle. So the first, I'd say, half of your finger. So if you go right about there, that's where your, your pectoralis major is going to begin. And then we have the sternal clavicular head, which is going to be on the sternum and the cartilage of the upper six ribs. Rib one is right under your clavicle, two, three, four, five, six. So think of it like a piece of paper. You have an origin, and the distal part is going to move, and that's the insertion. The origin is not going to move. So the pectoralis major is going to begin here. It's going to insert in the lateral lip of the bicipital groove. If you take a look at the largest upper body bone, the humerus, you have a greater tubercle, you have a lesser tubercle, and then you have this bicipital groove. So what muscle do you think goes through there? Obviously the bicep. And it's going, it's going to originate on the coracoid process of the scapula. The bicep does. It's going to insert down here into the, the elbow flexion. For the pectoralis major, it inserts into the bicipital groove of the humerus. Guess what other muscle inserts right there? So the lateral lip, if you were to externally rotate and you open up your humerus, it's going to insert right into your armpit. Your latissimus dorsi also does. So they come from the anterior side, the posterior side, and they're going to insert deep into the armpit. It's like when we do chest flies, it's not uncommon or dips to feel a soreness the next day deep in your armpit. I did chest, but I feel it deep in here because that's where that muscle inserts. The action of the pectoralis major, we have a deduction in the frontal plane coming down. So technically when you do a lat pull down, you're working your chest, yeah. Horizontal adduction, so in the transverse plane, chest fly here. Then we have internal rotation. A lot of times we're here, internally rotating. Our humerus chest is working with that. The clavicular head is going to work with flexion, coming up. So doing a chest fly like this is going to work your upper portion of the pec. And lastly, we have extension and slight anterior tilt of the scapula for the sternocostal head. So anterior tilt of the scapula would be here, whereas extension is coming back. So again, it's interesting when you go over the actions of the muscle, you would never think when you do a cable row you're working part of your chest, right? But you technically are. 
So let's talk about some exercises that will engage those muscles, especially if you're a bro. Common language is, I want that block look. You know, girls want that glute ham separation. Well, if you want to get a guy excited, talk about the chest and that block look. So how do you get that block look? One, you got to lift heavy. You can't just do a specific exercise. Oh my God, I'm going to get that crazy block look. Genetics play a huge role as well. But you can find exercises that will put more of an emphasis. So for example, if you want upper chest, doing a chest fly that's high. So sit down, instead of going straight across, which would be more the sternal head, come high, go above. So then you're going to be targeting more of your upper region or the clavicular region of the chest. Incline is going to get the clavicular region, and that's why most guys don't like it for two reasons. One, they're not as strong, so it's an ego thing. If you're benching 225 on, if you're benching 225, you're not incline benching 225. It's because the emphasis is more on the clavicular head of the pec major. You're not getting as much as the sternal head. Also, you're stretching out this joint. There's four joints of the shoulder. We have the chromioclavicular, AC, glenohumeral, which has the most range of motion, the glenocavity articulating with the head of the humerus, and then we have the sternoclavicular, and on the back we have the scapulothoracic. So when you bench press, look at the angle that my humerus is going. Extension. Humerus with the glenohumeral joint has roughly 60 to 70 degrees. When you bench press, you're right in that acceptable range. Look what happens when I incline. You're going about 10, 20, maybe as much as 30 degrees more than what the average person has. Especially bros, we're here, we got invisible lats in and we're walking around and then we talk about, you know, bench, and incline just kills my shoulder. Yeah, your range of motion sucks. Can you even get back to 60 to 70 degrees? If you can't, you shouldn't be doing incline. So that's where people get themselves in trouble. They say, incline sucks, it hurt my shoulder. No, your range of motion sucks, and you shouldn't have been doing that exercise. So just to review chest anatomy, the pectoralis majors, one muscle, three parts. Don't confuse the pec major with the pec minor. You've got to remove the pec minor. It's underneath. It's more of a scapular stabilizer and a breather muscle, assisting in breathing originates on the clavicular head of the, sorry, the clavicular head originates on the medial clavicle. Medial closer to the midline, lateral away. Inserts into the, the bicipital groove, the lateral lip. Open up, right near into your armpit. The actions, adduction. So a chest fly down here is gonna help get that block look. And when you stop here at adduction, that's why when you get a chest fly and you lean over, you're gonna get more adduction. So you're going to feel that twist. And if you get a little more of a twist in the end, you're just getting more rotation. Horizontal adduction, chest fly. The clavicular portion is going to get flexion. The sternal portion is going to get extension. Internal rotation and slight anterior tilt and scapula. So if you're looking for that block, bench press, make sure the load is there. You've got to develop that tension. Six to eight reps. So your first exercise, three to four sets, six to eight. You can even get down to three to, three to five reps. Develop that tension, and you gotta get a lot of volume in there. So do chest flies here, do chest flies high, do chest flies low. If you really wanna argue, the bench press is kind of a terrible exercise for development of the chest. Because look at the action of the humerus. Horizontal adduction, yeah, but you don't have that much. A push up, you're gonna get a lot more because your scapula's moving, it's better for you probably. And then the chest fly. So why not do a bench press right into a chest fly, increase that volume. So if your goal is that block look, develop the chest, what you need to do, Name of the game, tension, but consistent, consistently training week after week after week. Don't just do one chest day. Hit chest Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I hit chest probably four times a week. I don't have a jack chest by any means, but I like to train chest. I love hitting bench press, but I'll do a, chest, a push day, which will be more chest emphasis. Then I'll have a shoulder day, which I'll do more incline emphasis. Because EMG activity is very, very high on your upper pectoralis major muscle when you do an incline. When you're doing incline, but also for your anterior delta. Hopefully you liked the video. Actually, I know you did because Chris, your favorite trainer, has the belt buckle. More muscles to come. Have a great day. Make sure to follow us.